welcome to another edition of uh, Why in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. And for those of you who may not have seen the program in the past, we do talk about military and veterans issues and uh, try to enlighten you to what's happening and also get some responses from some of the issues of the day. Uh, today, I have a special guest, Mr. Scott Bryan, who is a um, former, there's no such thing as a former no Marine. No such thing as former officer. Marine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyhow. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Okay. How would you like to be addressed, sir? Scotty. Scotty? Okay. Scotty, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Good. Um, so I just got to make a comment on the, on the hat. Are you part of the rodeo or anything like that? Or no, you... no, I'm just a little old redneck. Hmm. I used yeah. to be one myself. <laughs> yeah. Ran into a lot of problems. Anyhow, um, one thing I want to talk about, a little bit about your background before we start off. Uh, what's your military uh, experience? I uh, was in the Marine Corps for four years, uh, 1977 to 81, stationed right here at Kaneohe. Okay. All right. Um, and where are you originally from? Okay. Actually, believe it or not, from here. Uh -huh. um, but what I did a lot of traveling in the mainland, uh -huh. and I just came back in 2010. Good. I know that also you're part of a lot of different organizations. Uh, we had members of the uh, Fleet Reserve, which I know that you're a member of also. But I also know that you're uh, heavily involved in a lot of things involving the veterans in the military community. And could you tell us what are some of the things that's going on there that we may not be aware of? Because even with all the different organizations over here and efforts to help veterans in the military, um, a lot of, there's a lot of disconnect. And sometimes you have an organization that's doing great things that uh, other people may not be aware of. But in, with your experience and what you see out there, what's happening in that you know, we could share with our audience? Well, I'm also part of the Marine Corps League, and um, you know, I just had the fortunate being elected as a commandant mm -hmm. uh, for the Marine Corps League Aloha Detachment 363. Mm -hmm. Um, as you said, I'm with the Fleet Reserve Association, Pearl Harbor, Honolulu Branch 46. Uh, one of the biggest disconnects I see is, is just getting information out <coughs> to the veterans. Yeah. Um, social media is a good thing, but I also think it kind of hinders because it puts people in a different spotlight where there's, I think it's more individual. Okay. People aren't passing the information out like they should. Um, used to be, had a big membership in some of these organizations, and I think that organizations that membership has dwindled yeah. due to social media. Uh, why is that? I mean, because I know you hear some negative things that come out. Recently, there was something about what was happening with the wounded warriors and maybe misappropriation of funds at some level or another. And I think that's the one of the things that does, that uh, sticks in a lot of people's mind. You know, like, really, what is going on with these organizations? Are they staying true to mission? You know, or what's going on? But how is that working out? Well, I, I, I think that uh, you lose, um, when people do social media, they just get so wrapped up in themselves, looking at that phone, looking mm -hmm. at that computer, and doing things you're not involved one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, or in a group face to face with people talking about issues. Yeah. Um, and I think with <coughs> the you know, Wounded Warriors Project, um, I think, you know, I don't know a whole bunch about it other than what I've heard, as yeah. you said. But I think any time you get upside down where most of your money is going to support an organization, I think that really does start to tick people off. I yeah. think they, they lose focus right. when you're putting more money into the organization than into what it should be going into. Right. Okay. You mentioned the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the dwindling membership, not only with, uh, I guess, with your organization, but also with the, some of the other major known organizations. Um, Again, is there some sort of disconnect between, I know we have, with all the veterans we have out there, people that served in Iraq and Afghanistan and, you know, numerous other places around, that they're not really actively involved in these different um, organizations. Um, do you, can you give me a, you have a guess on to why that may be happening? Um, social media. I uh, think that, you know, a lot of people, it's, it's hard when, you, with the, when you're meeting at an organization with a whole bunch of people, meetings take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Social media, you know, <coughs> Facebook, Twitter, you know, just talking on the phone, you can hit people lickety split right. and get to them. And people have that attention span, um, I guess, I'm I hate to say it, not that. they don't last as long yeah. as they used to be. Right. You know, you're, you're getting involved in a meeting sometimes, you got to be involved in a meeting and be part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people like that instant gratification of, sending out a tweet or a text and getting that back and not having to deal with it. So I think that has caused to it. And the, the younger generation, they're into that social media. Yeah. They're not into 
sitting in a meeting that might last two hours. Yeah. An hour you might get them, but two hours, hour and a half, forget it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think with the, uh, you mentioned the meetings and, you know, of course, social media with, uh, yeah, the instantaneous communications and everything else. But there's something to be said for, you know, face-to-face -face communications and that camaraderie that, you know, that you get when you're in a room with another group of people who can empathize with some of the situations you may be going through anyhow. Because I know that uh, with some of the back way, you know, little back when, when uh, Vietnam, was that some of the veterans weren't really welcomed with open arms into a lot of the organizations. Is that still the case nowadays or is like say there's a different dynamic? Um, I think finally, mm -hmm. uh, my father's a Vietnam veteran mm -hmm. and uh, what you said is correct. They weren't welcome with open arms. Mm -hmm. I've seen it firsthand with my father and other veterans from Vietnam. Um, but I do think that tide has changed. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why it's changed is because of, you know, going into, you know, Afghanistan and Iraq, those, mm -hmm. those wars uh, made us think about what we did to the Vietnam veterans. and. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we're now finally starting to recognize, which by all rights they're due, yep. uh, that recognition uh, for serving in Vietnam. So I think it's starting to come full circle where they're starting to get that recognition and, um, you know, hope we keep, keep doing it because they do deserve it. Yeah. One of the important things with the, um, with the military in general or even with the, with the veterans is the support system that they have in place. And this is with friends and family. All right. What's in place right now as far as with the different organizations for spouses? Because nowadays you have, of course, females serving in the military, so they may be going off and their husband's at home. What's in place right now that helps to support or gives them the opportunity to get involved or to be appreciated more by the community because they're, they're behind the scenes or in the shadows, so to speak? Um, I will honestly tell you from my experience of growing up as a military brat, my father being in the Marine Corps, there wasn't that support. Mm -hmm. I think it's gotten a heck of a lot better than what it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, there are, um, you know, with Navy, it's the MWR, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Um, they are doing a lot better recognizing the spouse, whether it's male or female, right. the husband or the wife. They are doing a better job recognizing that and getting them involved um, with different functions. Um, where before you really didn't have that, it was, you know, the, the wife's yep. most, of the, you know, getting mm -hmm. together and taking care of each other. Yep. And I think out of that, we now got something that is a lot better. And each, um, with the Marine Corps, you got different, um, at the battalion level, mm -hmm. they got different organizations that, you know, the, the wives or the husbands can get together and right. do things to recognize and help out. And make it easier for that transition when they're going overseas or coming back. All right. So. Um, again, with the different organizations you with, what are some of the things that the, the general public may not be aware of that uh, is um, being done by um, you know not only the groups? Because I know there's a lot of people out there. We have a lot of I mentioned before a lot of unsung heroes who are veterans who don't um, they're not in front of the camera all the time. They don't seek spotlight. They're out there giving back to the community because one of the things that we, we mentioned before is the fact that in the with most people in the military they do have that spirit of giving back wanting to you know to be there you know uh, because they've seen the, a lot of cases of what happens in far other countries where the lack of social supports or whatever you know and here in our country we you know it's paying it forward a lot of times you know so do you see that I mean as far as there's more involvement or could I think it's both ways. I think there is a lot more involvement for someone to get involved, but I also think we can't forget the guys that didn't get that help. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing that um, that the civilian population needs to understand is PTSD can affect anybody mm. and on any different level. It doesn't mean you have to be a combat veteran. Yeah. It could have been anything mm -hmm. that causes that. So. I just, you know, I think when you have a person who has served in the military, retired from the military, my hat's off to them because they did something that a lot of people don't do. Yep. There's only a certain percentage that go in the military. So a guy who does his four-year hitch and gets out, I'll shake his hand. A guy who does 20 years or longer, I'll double shake his hand because that's, it's a whole different ball game. And I think that they deserve a little bit more because it's built in them to give back, like you said. Yep. They have that 
that organizational skills that sometimes you won't get in the civilian world. Taking yep. care of men, doing certain things that a lot of people will never understand. Yep. Uh, that camaraderie mm -hmm. and that brotherhood. Yeah, because as you mentioned, like um, the PTSD issue, that of course that's been a big thing we've been talking about or addressing the issues of suicides. You know, um, the pressure that uh, of course a lot of our troops have been under. You know, it's not all doom and gloom, but there are things that need to be addressed and talked about. And um, on a previous program, as I mentioned, someone questioned why the military personnel don't be, aren't more active as far as addressing a lot of issues that concern them and even some of the um, issues concerning our, our, gov you know, our government policies or whatever, you know. And again, what we try to point out here is that there's a protocol that is, you know, called for and the military personnel, you know, they do have the opportunity when they do take off the uniform, you know, to still get involved, you know, with the what's happening out there. But the support system, again, where, you know, if the civilian populace is aware of what's going on, I think we have an obligation, or uh, say they have an obligation, in a way to go ahead and when the certain things cannot be addressed within the military confinement, you know, the system, then I think it's up to the uh, population or the citizens uh, who are benefiting from the, their servicemen's service, you know, to address these issues for them. You know, call your congressman, keep abreast of what's happening, you know, as far as with the uh, benefits, things of that nature. You know, if there's not programs in place, like say, to help um, alleviate some of the stress, then what we need to do is, you know, it does help when you do get that civilian support. Yeah, well, like what you just said, there's a lot, you know, think the guy who does one, two, three tours overseas, yep. or not even in a combat zone, but has to take off for deployment for whatever reason it might be. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's facing something that, you know, most people in their civilian world aren't gonna face. You yep. know, you get up, go to work, it's the same thing every day, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, the military man's working seven days a week, 24 seven. He's not, you know, he's not taken off that day, he might get that 96, that 72, but yeah. he's still in oh, the uniform, oh. we're in the military, you know, we're yeah. in the uniform. But I think a lot of it, um, yeah, as time goes by, you know, we're all gung-ho at the beginning of anything that we do, yeah. but as time goes by, it starts to slow down yeah. and we forget about it. Mm -hmm. And it's like what you said, you gotta reach out to your politician, you know, pick up that phone, call them. Yeah. And it's tough when a lot of the population there, there's so many places out there that there is no military population, right. so they have no clue other than what they might see on TV, mm -hmm. whatever news program they're watching. Yep. Um, and I think that's part of it too. But it is getting the politicians, because I honestly think civilians can do a lot, but I think your politicians are the ones that got to step up to the plate, yep. because they're the ultimately the ones that are, you know, making these issues, that are behind these issues, voting on yep. what might happen and not happen. Yep. Sometimes you wonder where they're coming from, you know, like uh, where their heart lies, you know. And uh, exactly, yeah, like I say, it's really uh, that's a whole different subject matter there, which I it, yeah, on it's it's a point. whole that's a whole new ball game. That's a whole yeah. new can of worms right there. Yeah, 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 because that's one of the thing is, um, you know, like I say, with social media and everything else, you know, um, it helps to keep on top of things, you know. And again, with only like one percent of the population is actually serving, you know, um, it's. Yeah, you wonder sometimes, like, say, what is really going on. Getting back, like, say, because uh, in the past couple of programs, I had uh, representatives from the fleet to come on. It's not that it's the only organization on the no. island, you know, no, no. but I'm more familiar with it and be, you know, for the sake of um, full disclosure, I'm a member. I go there a lot anyhow, you know. Thank you. That's <laughs> fun. At least I get there anyhow, you know. So a lot of people, uh, I've been going there for a while, you know, and um, I know there's an effort afoot to go ahead and try to, uh, buy the land from from the government, you know, to continue the operations there. How is it coming with that? Because I know that there was um, some sort of initiative by the politicians to go ahead and grant certain monies. What how was the standing on that now, and what's the future? Okay. Well, um, actually, we we went forward with a grant and we were approved for the grant, but there are things that just because you were approved doesn't mean you're gonna get the grant. So we are, as a, as a person on the committee, I'm no. actually the committee chairman, no. um, we are in the process of working with um, one of the state representatives to put all the paperwork together yep. 
to get that grant. So, you know, the, the committee has been doing a fantastic job um, with fundraisers, coming up with ideas to make money to save the place. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we are moving forward and I, we'll, you know, we'll save the place, but that doesn't mean don't give donations. Please, yeah. we, need, we need that help. But, um, you know, we are working forward. Like I said, we did put the grant in. We've been approved. It's just a matter of taking the next step to get that money. Okay. So we can take a break, but we're going to do that right now. Let's so we can identify ourselves and all that. But we'll come back and continue our conversation. All right. And you're here with uh, Uniform and Hawaii. All righty. My grandmother, what big eyes you have, she said. All the better to see you with my dear. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the starting line. Hush. Uh, when this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But I have a story, and I don't know where to start. I feel alone in a crowd. I can't sleep. I feel overwhelmed. I don't even know who I am anymore. I still have nightmares. I can't live like this anymore. I'm really not so good. But are you ready to listen? Okay, you're back with uniform. Uh, I keep forgetting to name my own program. But anyhow, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Any I forget my own name, too. <laughs> That's why I carry an ID card, you know. But anyhow, <laughs> we're talking with uh, Scotty. And, um, again, you were mentioning, like I said, what was happening with the uh, Fleet Reserve. And I know that it's not only, like I said, with the Fleet, but there's other organizations out there that are struggling, you know, because of the lack of support. You mentioned the dwindling um, membership and things of that nature, anyhow. But, again, to go back to the Fleet right now, there is a situation uh, because it may be uh, indicative. I think that's a word. Anyhow, uh, well, what's going on with some of the other organizations? Anyhow, with some of the lack of support. But again, what are you guys doing? You mentioned about the grant that was uh, tentatively, you know, approved, but now it has to go to the governor. What is the process that you have to go through now to secure the, the, the funds? Well, what uh, the first thing we have to do is, like I said, we we approve for the grant. Mm -hmm. We're going to meet with the representative Ken and I. Uh, butcher's last name, so I won't say it, yeah. um, and get with him and put together the questionnaire that he has for us, answer the questions, and then it gets submitted and goes from there, uh, gets, it goes on to the governor yeah. uh, for the budget to be signed, and yeah. if we're in that budget, we get the money. I know there's somebody sitting out there, and when I ask this question, the fact is, okay, if the grant was granted, okay, but you still have to jump through hoops to go ahead and actually get the money. Or yeah, it's it's more or less. Um, I guess from in the previous past, they've had you know where people you know they want to make sure that you're going to be. What are you doing uh -huh. on your end to to make sure that the doors are going to stay open? Yeah. Because the grant is there to help us, but we still got to raise more money. Yeah. Um, you know to to save the place. Yeah. It's you know, it's, uh, it's part of it. So, you know we we uh, you know, as a committee we've looked at other avenues. Um, you know, to get the rest of the money mm -hmm. so that we save it because let's face it, we, nobody wants to give you money if you're going to close the door months later yeah. and that was a waste of taxpaying dollars. Right. But one thing with the location over there, um, besides uh, catering to the military active and, you know, the veterans, a lot, of course, it's mainly Navy retirees that go in there, but of course, all ranks retirees are welcome. Uh, what, um, the other, a lot of things that people may not be aware of. Not only does it, you know, take care of certain needs of the uh, veterans, but it also plays a part in the community because one of the things over here with the beautiful sunshine and people hitting the roads all the time, there's a lot of the uh, motorcycle organizations, you know, that frequent the place also, you know. So I know that with that and also the Boy Scouts and some other people where um, the location is um, of import to uh, a lot of people out there in the community and all which also gives them access to learn more about uh, the veterans by you know close proximity so yeah we we've got a lot of organizations that do meet um, 
at the FRA in our halls, mm -hmm. uh, the Marine Corps League being one of them, mm -hmm. and a lot of biker clubs that are veteran, a lot of veteran biker clubs yeah. that yeah. actually do runs, that actually do raise a lot of money, that go to support organizations yeah. um, and fundraising to support other organizations and other various causes. We did one uh, for the Coast Guard for Jacob's Quest mm -hmm. a couple years back uh, to raise money for one of our members that their child was facing a difficult time right. um, to help get the van for this person. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're actually in a very good spot where we're located. Um, the Navy's right there, Pearl Harbor, Hickam's right there. But as you said, we also welcome, you know, other, the Army and Air Force can become members as a, as a, as a lounge member. Right. Um, and we do help them out as well. I mean, we do various, um, and let that organization do fundraisers through our organizations to help them raise money for what they need to do. So that's that's one of the things we do too. It's not just the FRA. We we do help out other organizations do things too. Yeah. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask this question. The thing is, with the, when you put out a public call for uh, support, you know, financial support and everything else, I guess you guys have something in place if there, as far as transparency, where actually you mentioned that uh, before you get the grant. You have to show that why well, you know the doors are going to stay open, what you're going to do with it, and all that. For those somebody who really wanted to make a substantial donation, even a smaller one, anyhow, is there something in place again that would alleviate any reservations they may have as far as donating to the cause? Uh, actually, we're you know we we are transparent. Anybody mm -hmm. anybody's welcome to come down and talk to anybody on the committee. Mm -hmm. Myself, Glenn, the branch president, John Eipert. Um, other committee members, Dan Del Monte, Sandy Gaston, yep. um, and you know we can always give them any information they want to know, how much we've raised so far, mm -hmm. um, and what we are doing. Yep. Um, we we don't put it out there, um, you know, because it would just be too much. It's time consuming. Yep. But we're always transparent with uh, you know where monies have come in and mm -hmm. where monies are going right. to keep the you know to keep the, the branch going. Right. Okay. So what's new on the horizon, let's say, with you uh, or in, in general? Because I know, again, you uh, attend the meetings for the Oahu Veterans Council, which uh, represents the... Um, everybody? Supposedly everybody <laughs> over here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> that's another... Anyhow. That's another story. That's yeah. another story. But anyhow, um, uh, what, what's out there, like say, that we, that hasn't hit the spotlight yet that that's me you may be aware of this being planned uh, either collectively with the organizations or individual uh, groups or individuals is there anything that you're aware of that would have you know an impact on our community well I think that um, me personally there's um, you know social media as we discussed has taken off so a lot of people are getting on social media there's a lot of pages out there that were, people belong to yep. for organizations but I would like to see uh, people get hands-on, come to a meeting, mm -hmm. and that's what we've been we've been trying to do. OVC doing the same thing. The yeah. Marine Corps League, uh, we're doing the same thing, trying to bring people in to do that hands-on. Mm -hmm. And I think when you do something like that, you can get more people involved. Yeah. Unfortunately, it, like I said, it has to be in that quick spurt yeah. where you're not taking their whole day or something. Yeah. Well, but, with the fleet, do they have a web page or something like that? Or? Yes, we have, um, and we are in the process of changing that, so I don't know what it is off the top of my head, yep. but there is a web page um, that you can go to, um, Fleet Reserve Association, Pearl Harbor, Honolulu Branch 46. Okay. Um, you can look it up on face, um, on email, and it'll take you there to it yep. um, on, on the Internet. Okay. And um, you know, we do have a uh, Facebook page, yep. um, and we post, you know, everything that we got going on mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. I usually do most of that posting myself. Yep. And um, the RFRA puts out uh, what we call the news bites mm -hmm. of a lot of things that are happening on the legislative side mm -hmm. and nationally mm -hmm. um, called the FRA News Bites, and we post that on there as well. Yeah. And it's actually pretty good because you can see what's coming down the pike right. you know, and what they're fighting for. Mm -hmm. uh, just recently, the, the, the new retirement, you know, the FRA was involved in that, trying to yeah. change, not not change it, keep it the way it is, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, we know that changed. Yeah. So. Sure. Let's get back to the Marine Corps League. Um, <clears throat> what are they doing? Okay, how, of course, you've 
as they say, there's no such thing as a former Marine. And not no such thing as a former Marine. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Okay, I, I joined <laughs> the wrong branch. But, <laughs> but oh uh, no, no. Yeah, but what else are, are they doing? I mean, this is open to all all ranks, or how's that? Well, work? the Marine Corps League is open to the Marine Corps. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, but then the Marine yeah, Corps. If, if you uh, and corpsmen. Yeah. Because corpsmen, you know, that's Doc. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that was there with you. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's open to the active duty, uh, reservist veterans, and of course, the Navy corpsmen, yep. um, FMF, and and um, we're we're involved with um, you know we have a scholarship fund that mm -hmm. we try to work with uh, the young Marines, great organization over there at Kaneohe, uh, John D. Giovanni, a retired Marine, mm -hmm. is uh, you know running that organization over there, yep. doing a fantastic job with the young Marines, and you know we're involved with them, they're involved with us. Um, over at Kaneohe, where, uh, there's a wounded warrior, the Windward Friends, uh, you know, wounded warrior. Yep. That guy over there, Chaps, is doing a great job, mm -hmm. and we're getting involved with that. Mm -hmm. um, we're also, um, I'm a 3-3 Marine, so I'm involved with the, the Lieutenant Colonel over there in charge of the battalion, yep. uh, Lieutenant Colonel Easton, mm -hmm. um, working with him to, you know, help with the battalion, you know, because a lot of, lot of things have changed now where they got to do their own fundraising. Yep. That's one thing that's changed in the military, that tax dollar's not there like it used to be. Yeah. Uh, a lot of organizations, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, they have to go out and do their own fundraising to do events that they want to participate in. Yeah. Speaking of which, with the cutbacks and everything else, <coughs> I know that it seems like whenever there's a major problem as far as with the budget in Washington, one of the things they want to put on the chopping block is something that affects the veterans or retirees. You know. Is there anything that's being put in place? I know of a couple efforts that's uh, trying to ground some, uh, gain some traction anyhow, where if there is a situation where there are cutbacks and you have a veteran or a retiree that um, needs assistance, do you, are you aware of any programs right now where, like say, you, you know, as far as reference them, referencing them to a source that could help augment any losses they may have financially as far as with the cutbacks or even now um, one thing we're looking at is the um, treatment program okay we got some pretty good treatment up at the VA but still in all you know there may be something in place that the veteran may be going through that's not covered under the VA that may be an alternative you know type of um, um, medical treatment thing anyhow are you aware of anything like that or it's just uh, no, I, I do know that, believe it or not, the FRA is a, a big, we're a big lobbyist. We're, yeah. we're up there fighting to keep what we do have yeah. and to hold on what we have yeah. still in place. Um, but you're right, everything's cut. It's always the veteran that gets cut. Yeah. But uh, I would suggest to anybody out there is, uh, you know, come on down to the FRA. Mm -hmm. You know, my name's Scotty Bryan, come see me. I'll get you in touch with whoever I need to get you in touch with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, put at least try to get the ball rolling to get you who you need to talk to. Yeah. Um, Marine Corps League, same thing. Yeah. But there, that there are organizations <coughs> out there, and if I can't help you, I'll find the person who can. Great. Okay. We're getting down to the wire in here, but yeah, one thing we need to encourage, you know, is to connect the dots. You know, if you're a part of an organization or you're doing something that's worthwhile, you know, that uh, benefits, because the more we support ourselves, the less stress it is on the civilian side. You know, through social services and all that stuff. But uh, yeah. Um, Scotty, thanks for joining us. Like I said, we'll come, you know, come down and check things out and, uh, oh, yeah. you know, keep on top of it. But I uh, know you're doing a great job anyhow. But right now I want to say thank you to the viewers and uh, keep in touch. Stay tuned. God bless. And until that time. <laughs>